this is the seventh uh, pilgrimage to the Holy Land that I organized. I really thank Ace and his ability to gather us together and organize this tour. I think that everyone on the trip was handpicked by God. Do not to forget our Andre, who is our tour guide, who is uh, went beyond our uh, needs uh, uh, all the way to the airport. So it was evening when we arrived. We were being bused to hotel. Not and our, uh, before we disembark, I'd like to say a quick prayer yes. um, for, our, for our safe safe arrival here. So let's just take a moment and place ourselves in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing everyone here. Thank you for bringing us all together on this pilgrimage. We offer up to you our tired and our, and our weary bodies. We ask that you send your spirit among us to bless us with peaceful and restorative sleep, to renew and fresh, refresh us so that we can be ready for the encounters and the graces you have in store for us tomorrow. And may the cross of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, come between us and all harm, and may God bless you all this evening in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That first night we were in Tel Aviv, of all things, um, I was staying at this lovely hotel, and I opened the uh, door to the balcony, and I could hear the waves of the Mediterranean, and I could smell the sea. And there's something timeless about that. The next morning, we had a wonderful buffet breakfast. There was a lot of good food. And then it was time to begin our pilgrimage. So check it out. We stop at the mountain of the prophet yeah. Elijah. It is the home of the Carmelite order the Shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Elijah's cave resides inside. We stop by Caesarea, a major seaport built by Herod. During our trip, we bumped into a bunch of college students, and some of us were thinking how fortunate they were to experience the Holy Land before we start out in life. It's something they can take with them well into adulthood. The Theater of Caesarea. Many pieces are on display to show what it once looked like. Here are the remains of Herod's palace. Including a decorative pool. This is the Hippodrome, horse racing. racing. It's the biggest building in the Roman city. Bigger than the theater. In Jerusalem, a very special young girl was born.
St. Anne's Church was built upon the birthplace of the Virgin Mary. Later in life, Mary finds herself in Nazareth to fetch water. She has to go to a well next to her home. Mary's home, the place where the angel Gabriel appeared to her. The church was built upon her home. Many pilgrims come to visit the place where it all began. And the word became flesh. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for you have found the favor of God. Behold, you conceive in your womb and bear his son, and you shall name him Jesus. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. So the angel Gabriel had told Mary that her relative Elizabeth was with child and was in her sixth month. Mary would have to make a trip from Nazareth to Encarnum which is 90 miles. Today we are taking a trip to our Mary Elizabeth. Along the wall is Mary's Magnificat, written in many different languages. Bethlehem, that was very special where he was born. Uh, it, it's just an um, uh, all inspiring experience to be.
be able to see the birthplace of the moon. On the night that Jesus was born, there were shepherds in the region living in the fields, keeping the night watch over their flock. They were living in caves like this one. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts of the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. But since we are at the River Jordan, and I know Jesus is, is here, I can, um, this is not a sacramental baptism, okay? <laughs> but I can um, baptize you with, with water if you like, on your forehead, um, just to symbolize, but it's not a, it's not a re-baptism, we don't believe in re-baptism, you're only baptized once, you're, ba you're, you're, you're baptized in the Trinity.
Tour group was gonna get wet again because they were interested in swimming in the Dead Sea. Because I was reading about it uh, a couple of days before our trip, and I was so excited to test if it's really true that you float on, on the sea. So that's my favorite thing. This is Dead Sea. After Jesus' baptism, he went out to the desert for 40 days. There, he was tempted by the devil. This place is known as the Mountain of Temptation. It is situated west of Jericho. Halfway up the mountain, a monastery exists. We go to the place where Christ performed his first miracle. But first, we're going to stop by a souvenir shop along the way. Hey, my friends, I'm going to ask you something, please. How many couples going to renew their vows in our church? So uh, every couple, like raise yes. like one hand. Every couple raise one hand. One the hand. Room, the groom. The groom. The, the groom. Where's okay. the groom? Oh, the groom only. The groom only. Only groom. One, two, three, four, well, five. Can I do it? Yes, my husband is still in Seattle. Oh, the attorney's still here. Five, yeah. but six. I'd like to. Seven. 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 Six. Okay. Seven. I would like to give for each couple a special gift. Oh. Whoa. Yes, please. One. My gift, you will not give it for anybody. You remember this from Christian man? From the whole land, they give it to you, so you keep it for yourself. You will not give it for anybody. You will not lose it. And, and don't, don't, don't sell it. <laughs> this is a big thing. Alright, so we have seven couples, the father will put a blessing for the couples, come to please. Are there, are there someone here who's not with their husband that would like it blessed, or not with their spouse or their wife? One, two, who else? Two? Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless these pins, symbol of wedding ring, symbol of their devotion to one another. May they grow in deeper love for you, their spouses, so that they become, they can be the husband and the wife, the man and woman you're calling them to be. And may God bless these pins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give each person a cup of wine in the group. So please don't drink the wine alone. We will raise it together. All right? Okay. okay. Thank you so much. I thank you, Ate. Smelling. Oh, smelling, yes. That's true. Tears. VIP cup. Who didn't get wine, yet? Wine, we're drinking wine. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Did you get a pen? Oh. No. I didn't. Okay. Huh? No, it was, 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 no, it Yes. Please, we need your blessing for the Christian community in the Holy Land and for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay. So, in remembrance of our Lord Jesus' first miracle here in Cana, we share this wine together as one family. We pray also for the people here in Jerusalem for peace, especially among the Christians who are, who are living in this place. May God bless this, our time together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Cheers. 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 Welcome, guys, to the holiday. Cheers. This is delicious. Okay, it's sweet wine, right, my yes. friends? Yes. 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 That is the traditional wine of Kamla. That's what we use. Sorry, to the church. Yeah, that, that's what we use in our church mm. for the wedding. The name of this wine is the Sacrament of Marriage. We now head to the wedding church in Kena. Here is a sample of a vessel made of stone. I renew and reaffirm and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. My wedding vows to you. Once again, I promise. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. To love and honor you in good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Lord, increase and consecrate the love of these married couples that they have for one another. The wedding rings they once exchanged are a sign of their fidelity. May they continue to prosper in the grace of the sacrament. May God bless your wedding rings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> So now we're in Tiberias, which is along the Sea of Galilee, and we're staying at a hotel, and they are feeding us very well. A um, lot of food, both for breakfast and dinner. A lot of dessert, too. The hotels are good. The food is good. And uh, I heard some noise outside, and I looked out my window, and there's some activity going on. But out there, we have lots of um, cold drinks, gelato, vendors, uh, people selling things. There were some people who were fishing. So there's a lot of activity that's happening in Galilee. I, I like the word when they say that the, when Jesus said uh, that they, you can catch so many fish. And I want to know where, where it was. Yeah. <laughs> just don't eat it, huh? <laughs> okay, let's try. One, two, two three. three.
I loved Capernaum because, and and the way it it was, it just kind of like Jesus' life started to unfold when he when he went from Nazareth to Capernaum to the Sea of Galilee to call the apostles, and it just made me realize how much he loves us. You know that he actually went to. Um, these places because he knew those souls that he was choosing to help him found his church. So it just made me see things, try to see things through his eyes more, like what he created, the people he created, those who he came in contact with, and how he called them. So Jesus walked on that floor, here, at that level. Yes? This wall over here is part of the first century. No, 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 no. No, uh, no the wall is the building a foundation for the newer one, okay. the later one. Okay. Yeah. I remember of a day we went to the Mount of Beatitudes. On our way to the church, there were these monuments on the sidewalk which had uh, parts of a sermon that Jesus had uh, given there. These little monuments are reminders that that sermon did take place on that very hill. Throughout Israel, there are these trees of purple foliage on them. They're very beautiful and there happened to be one along the sidewalk as we were heading to the church. I was wondering where Jesus was sitting while he was delivering the sermon. I can also imagine the crowds of people who were sitting around listening to him. To the Sea of Galilee and the people would have been here, where you are, where the church is all over here. I look at the Sea of Galilee, which is picturesque in the background. So, yeah, acoustically. We then go see the rock upon which Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish. When Jesus asked the disciples who they thought he was, Simon Peter said, You are Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, 
that he would build his church upon Peter, and that Peter would be the rock, and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but only God. But then what happens immediately after he says that? He tells Peter, I have to suffer and die. This is God's plan. And Peter says, no, I can't let you do that. And he says to him, get away from me, Satan. A special moment for me was when we went to Mount Tabor and I celebrated my anniversary Mass of ordination at the church on Mount Tabor where Jesus was transfigured. I really felt his presence there and it was a special moment feeling that Jesus transfigured me just four years earlier as I was ordained a priest to the Crozier Fathers and Brothers. In Jerusalem, Jesus had performed several miracles, one of which was curing a man who had been ill for 38 years. The man had no one to help him get into the pool of Bethesda. When he was on his way there to the pool, the water stirred, but someone else would get in there first. Jesus healed the man on a Sabbath. Now, curing the sick is one thing, raising somebody from the dead is another. Today, we visit Lazarus' tomb. Okay guys, the...
go all the way inside. Are you gonna go in there? Wow, it's so tiny. The story had spread how Jesus raised a dead man to life. Many were amazed and started believing. Others, however, wanted to do away with him. Yes, this is the day we're celebrating with you. It's Passover, and Christ meets up with his apostles in the upper room to celebrate the Last Supper. Here, the institution of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ took place. That night, Jesus comes to this place of his disciples. sweat were like drops of blood. He was arrested and taken to the house of the high priest. Jesus was lowered into the dungeon. We went to visit the um, campus where Jesus was lowered into the dungeon, into the jail, and thinking about what he might have suffered the night before they even, he went, even went on trial, that people have no idea what he went through, and that really hit me hard. When he was put in the cave, I didn't even know that he was put in the cave. 
Station of the Cross. And, you know, you start feeling, and then after that, we see where he really lied, and that really did it. We have a law, and according to it, he must die. Thereupon Pilate washed his hands as a sign of innocence and said, I am guiltless of the blood of this just man. To me, walking this morning, doing the Stations of the Cross early with my pilgrim mates, um, I was struck by so many things in that process. You know, we're walking through the old city together, and I was at the tail end of the procession. I was joking with some people that it'll be okay. I ended up getting lost. I knew how to get back to the hotel. But uh, mostly, it was um, I could see all my the pilgrims in my group. You know, walking ahead of me, all these people and to be connected with, isn't it? We adore you and we, we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. I noticed that station three and station four are really right next to each other, maybe just five or ten feet. So station three falls for the first time after turning the corner, then station four, his mother meets them right away. Jesus to carry his cross. I noticed that when you're walking at this part of the Via de la Rosa, you're walking up the street from station five to station seven. The sixth station of the cross. Around the way is the face of Jesus. Jesus falls the second time. I noticed that going up to the eighth station, you go up a street, but then you go back down again to go to the next one. My guess is that at the time of Jesus, some of these buildings weren't even built yet. So we find ourselves going down a dark tunnel to get to the ninth station. Who are you? We reach the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. When you climb the hill of Golgotha, you have to take these really big steps up it.
at the crucifixion site, I was able to put my hand down the hole and feel the bottom of it or the rock that the cross was standing on. That really did it. I was born. Um, Crucifixion, where he died, that to me was the climax, you know, how much he loves us. Once you get down the hill of Golgotha, you can actually see the rock, or the actual hill through a glass window. Back on the bottom floor, there's a slab or stone of anointing that Jesus was put on after being taken down from the cross. Above it hangs some lanterns that drop oil but give the slab a fragrance. Another special moment for me was when we were at the Holy Sepulchral Church and I celebrated Mass with our fellow pilgrims. Uh, at Jesus' tomb. The Church of the Primacy of St. Peter was one of my most favorite spots on the trip. There was trees for shade. It was so peaceful and it was so quiet and calm. And you can get up to the water and you can see fish swimming in it. You can hear the birds in the air. You can hear the water as it hits the beach or the sound of water as it's flowing through the streams in the property. The place is really well kept. This is the place where Jesus met his disciples on the beach after he resurrected. Because remember, you can't... Simon Peter said to them, We are coming with you, they told him. They went out and got into the boat. Uh, that night they caught nothing. When daybreak came, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Friends, Jesus called to them, You don't have any fish, do you? No, they answered. They answer. Cast a net on the right side of the boat, he told them, and you will find some. So they did, and they were unable to haul it in because of the large number of fish. The disciple, the one Jesus loved, said to Peter, it's the Lord. The mother of the Emperor Constantine, Helena, was looking for the true cross of Christ. She was inspired by God to go to the Holy Land to find it. One person knew where it may have been buried and went to go dig for it, but found three different crosses in the cistern. To discover which one it was, Helena had laid a dead person on each of the three. After laying it on the last cross, the dead person became alive. This is the location of a cistern where the cross had been buried. This is the Church of St. Catherine, Bethlehem.
It was built at the alleged site of Jesus' apparition to her, where he announced to her of her upcoming martyrdom. It contains access to St. Jerome's two-room cave. This is St. Jerome's cave, where he spent 30 years translating the scriptures from Hebrew and Greek into Latin. St. Jerome was a biblical translator known for his Latin translation of the Bible, the Vulgate, and is considered a doctor of the church. One location of the cave is the burial place of the Holy Innocents. So this is the hotel, Notre Dame Hotel. And a nice view from the rooftop. And we're on the fourth floor. Uh, I want to tell also that um, Ace Consolation, our travel agent, uh, went beyond also uh, of wh what he did to us and we thank him for that and also our um, uh, Mr. Moses Cano in Texas um, thank you very much for the uh, wine and cheese it, that was so wonderful we enjoyed it my uh, experience uh, on the tour it's a very very good experience and I will never forget uh, I've been so many places, Italy, everywhere, but uh, about this uh, uh, Israel, oh my God, that will be unforgettable. Thank you very much. It's, it's very hard to nail it down to one place. I mean, to me, it's the whole experience. It's, it's going to such a historic place and it's been traveling with such a great group of people. Um, for me, history and religion were very boring subjects at school, they were my worst sort of thing. But when you go there to the actual place where, you know, where Jesus lived and all the others, where these amazing things happen, it brings it to life, it becomes a three-dimensional thing. So it's, it's that entire experience of, of seeing the world through different eyes, seeing history through different eyes, going to places that where things happened 2,500 or 2,000 years ago is entirely different than just reading about it in school. You know, going to Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, that's where he's from. And that's amazing to do that, to see the Sea of Galilee where he did so much work. The old city of Jerusalem, just an incredible place, an old walled city where these narrow streets and so many different religions coexisting side by side, all fantastic things. So I came to this group as a bit of an outsider, but this is the most welcoming group of people I've ever had the opportunity to travel with. Very open, very uh, warm, and, and so on. And, and that's Jesus' way to be open and receptive. And so I think this is a fabulous group. This is my seventh, oh, well, uh, probably my eighth pilgrimage here. And it's, it's always different because of the people you travel with and the spiritual director that you are with. We have a wonderful spiritual director. He's, he's been giving us a lot of spiritual messages that are uplifting and I'm emotionally touched by words that he say every Mass. We also have um, different groups of people that we don't really know because they come from so many different parts of the United States and Canada. When we first came here, I always thought that every Christian should come to the Holy Land at least once in their lifetime. There's a big disconnect between reading and hearing about these things that took place back then versus actually being there. Before you can only imagine what life was like there in the Holy Land, but now for being there, those images in your mind are replaced by actual places, sights and sounds. Um, I can, you can, as you walk through the streets and the vendors are starting to set up and you can smell the the candles and the incense and the zatar and the, um, the smoke and uh, the, the city has sounds and sights and smells, especially if you're walking through the, um, the old city streets, all the colors. And I'm looking at the backs of the heads of all these, my co-pilgrims, and I felt so connected and I was so struck that pilgrimage is something you do in community. I'm enjoying it because I'm seeing 
where our Lord has been. I'm seeing different kinds of people, you know, except Asians. Now I've seen people from Israel. And I'm having the real uh, feeling of the poverty of people around the world. And the third one, meeting new people, meeting new friends. That is kind of like the most exciting of it too. I know it's life changing. I'm receiving so many special graces and blessings on this trip and getting to know people that I've never met before. Inspirational Tours did a wonderful job of providing us with accommodations, safe travel, and an excellent tour guide so that we can really enter into the experience of visiting these holy places where our Savior walked. My uh, co-tourists in the group, they are so nice. We develop um, a sense of uh, camaraderie. It's not only that, we are just like uh, sisters and brothers. And I love this uh, pilgrimage. I could uh, um, I could tell to anybody that it's really a nice and you could feel the spirit of uh, brotherhood and sisterhood in this uh, group. And I appreciate everybody's help uh, because we help each other. Thank you everyone for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, travel and journey. And it, this, is, um, this is a travel and a trip for a lifetime for me. Thank you very much.